Liu Xiaoqi was born into a moderately rich peasant family in Huamingla village, in China's Hunan province on November 24, 1898. He attended Ningxiang Zushing Middle School and was told to attend a class in Shanghai to prepare for study in Russia. In 1920, he and friend Renbishi joined a socialist youth corps. In 1921, Liu was recruited to study at the Comintern University of the Toilers of the East in Moscow. Also in 1921, he joined the newly formed Communist Party of China. In 1922 he returned to China, and led several rail workers strikes as secretary of the All-China Labor Syndicate in the Yangtze Valley, and at Anyun on the Jiangxi Hunan border. In 1925, at the age of 27, Liu became a member of the Guangzhou based All China Federation of Labor Executive Committee. For the next two years, he led dozens of political campaigns and strikes in Hubei and Shanghai. He worked with Li Li San in Shanghai, organizing communist activities following the May 30th incident. After his work in Shanghai, Liu traveled to Wuhan. He was arrested in Changsha and then returned to Guangzhou to help organize the 16-month-long Canton Hong Kong strike. He was elected to the Communist Party's Central Committee in 1927, and was appointed to the head of the Labor Department. He returned to work at the party headquarters in Shanghai in 1929, and was named Secretary of the Manchurian Party Committee in Fengchun. Between 1930 and 1931, Liu attended the third and fourth plenums of the Sixth Central Committee, and was elected to the Central Executive Committee of the Chinese Soviet Republic in 1931. Later in 1932, he left Shanghai and traveled to the Jiangxi Soviet. Liu became the party secretary of Fujian province in 1932, aged 33. He went on the long march in 1934 as far as the Zuni Conference but was then sent to the white areas. These are areas controlled by the Kuomintang nationalists. To reorganize underground activities in northern China. He became party secretary in North China in 1936, leading the anti-Japanese movements in that area with the assistance of Peng Zhen, Un Ziwin, Bo Yibo, Qingxi, Liu Lantao, and Yao Yilin. Liu ran the Central Plains Bureau in 1939, and in 1941, the Central China Bureau. There are Japanese sources who claim the activities of his organization sparked the Marco Polo Bridge incident in July 1937, giving Japan an excuse to launch the Second Sino-Japanese War. Also in 1937, Liu traveled to the communist base at Yan'an. In 1941, Aged 43, he became a political commissar in the new Fourth Army. In 1945, aged 47, he was then elected as one of five Chinese Communist Party secretaries at the Seventh National Party Congress. After that Congress, he became the leader of all communist forces in Manchuria and northern China. After the founding of the People's Republic of China on October 1, 1949, Liu became the vice chairman of the Central People's Government, aged 50. In 1954, China adopted a new constitution at the First National People's Congress. At the first session, he was elected chairman of the Congress Standing Committee, a position he held until the Second National People's Congress in 1959. From 1956 to 1966, he was the first vice chairman of the Communist Party of China. Liu's work focused on party organizational and theoretical affairs. He wrote about his political and economic beliefs in his writings. His best known books are, How to Be a Good Communist, On the Party, and Internationalism and Nationalism. Liu spoke in favor of the Great Leap Forward at the 8th National Congress in May 1958. At this Congress Liu stood together with Deng Xiaoping in support of Mao's policies against those who were more critical, such as Chen Yun and Chao Enlai. In April 1959, he had gained Mao's respect and succeeded him as President of China. But Liu began to voice concern regarding the Great Leap Forward in the August 1959 Lushan Conference. In order to correct the mistakes of the Great Leap, 
Liu and Deng Xiaoping led economic reforms that solidified their positions in the party and the general public. These policies were more moderate than Chairman Mao's. Liu was publicly acknowledged as Mao's chosen successor in 1961. But, within a year, his opposition to Mao's policies had led Mao to have doubts about him. After Mao succeeded in restoring his prestige during the 1960s, Liu's eventual downfall became guaranteed. Liu's position as the second most powerful leader of the Chinese Communist Party had contributed to Mao's rivalry with him, indicating that Liu's purgent persecution was the result of a power struggle that went beyond the goals and well-being of China. By early 1966, no senior leader in China questioned the need for a major reform to combat the problems of corruption within the party. With the goal of reforming the government to be more efficient and true to the communist ideal, Liu himself chaired the Politburo meeting that officially began the Cultural Revolution. But, Liu and his supporters lost control of the revolution soon after it started. Mao used the movement to monopolize power and to destroy his enemies. Real and imagined. Mao established himself as a god who answered to nobody, and purged anyone he thought opposed him, and directed the Red Guards to destroy all state and party institutions. After the Cultural Revolution was announced, most of the senior members of the Communist Party who voiced any hesitation in following Mao's orders, including Liu Shaoqi and Deng Xiaoping, were removed from their posts immediately and made to go through mass criticism and humiliation with their families. Liu was denounced as a capitalist roader. Liu was replaced as deputy chairman by Lin Biao in July 1966. By January 1967, Liu and his wife Wang Guomei were under house arrest in Beijing. Liu was removed from the party in October 1968, and disappeared afterwards. Liu was beaten at public denunciation meetings after his arrest. He was denied medicine for diabetes and pneumonia. Liu was only given treatment when Jiang Qing thought he would die. She wanted Liu to be alive to serve as a living target during the Ninth Party Congress in 1969. Chao Enlai announced the party verdict that Liu was a criminal traitor and scab. In a book by Liu's doctor, he denied any medical maltreatment of Liu. According to Dr. Gakua, there was an entire medical team in charge of treating Liu. Between July 1968 and November 1969, Liu had seven bouts of pneumonia, and there had been a total of 40 consultations by top medical professionals regarding his treatment. Liu was closely monitored by the medical team. He died of pneumonia in an unheated room on November 12, 1969, 12 days short of his 71st birthday. In February 1980, the fifth plenum of the 11th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China issued the resolution on the rehabilitation of Comrade Liu Shouqi. This declared Liu's treatment wrongful. Lin Biao was blamed for concocting false evidence against Liu and for subjecting him to persecution. A high-profile memorial ceremony was held for Liu on May 17, 1980, and his ashes were scattered into the sea at Qingdao by his widow.